Hi guys. So today I'm going to show you how to fit a hamster kit to a standard factory sporting air rifle stock. So this was kindly given to me by Air Arms to chop up and to modify for this video. So thanks to Claire for that. That's, I mean, it's a beautiful bit of kit. It seems a shame to chop it up, but <laughs> there we go. Um, anyhow, I'm going to cover some of the fixings that you can use. I'll also cover some of the dimensions and things that you should consider when designing your own hamster kit. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I'm probably just going to paint it black. Trying to match this factory finish is a bit of a pain, so I'll probably just do it in a truck bed liner or something like that, nice and grippy. But the most important thing really is to consider with the fixings. I do not like using a single post affairs on sort of sporting stocks and the likes. So I'll show you how to mark out and how to drill the stock and some of the fixings that you can use. I'm not going to use anything really elaborate. I'm going to use pretty much readily available parts. So you should be able to go straight onto eBay, Amazon, wherever, any local hardware store and find the bits we're going to use today. So trying to keep it nice and simple for you. We'll go through it. I'll start by working out a design and then we'll take into consideration the maximum depths and the likes that we can go down to. Most HFT classes or most HFT clubs, associations, whatever, they have all stipulate a maximum depth of hamster of 150 mil. Now that's measured from the barrel center line down, so not the stock, not the scope rail, from the barrel center line to the lower edge of your hamster. Wherever it happens to be the deepest part, whether it happens to be deeper out at the front here, doesn't matter. It can't be any deeper than 150 mil from the barrel center line downwards. So you should always consider your own build as well when you're working out the size and the shape of your hamster. If you are a fairly big fella, then you're gonna find that you probably don't necessarily want to come right down to that maximum depth in any case. If you're taller and skinnier, you may find that actually you'll be a bit more beneficial to bring it down nearer that limit. And if you're something like me, I'm 5'7", fairly skinny, I tend to prefer a hamster around the 120, 125 mil overall depth. Now that works well for me. I don't like to go too deep. For me, it then tends to make a lot of the guns feel a little bit top heavy. But only you can really decide on that and really a bit of trial and error, getting it out on an HFT course, get a few shoots in. Even if you can get to a practice day, just get on the old plinking range and spend a bit of time. It would be worth making sure that you've got a few additional bits of material for your posts and whatever you used if you needed to fine tune it after a bit of a test session. But if you expect to get it right first time, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But certainly over the years, I've always ended up on mine, ended up making a few fine tuning adjustments to the months I've shot them for a little while. So bear that in mind, but let's get into it. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna keep it quite simple. I've got a slab of rough saw walnut there. That's just under 10 inches long. What I will do, I'm going to put a little bit of a swoop so it matches the underside of the stock reasonably well, but I'm gonna keep the hamster flat on its underside. Now, I may well change that going through. I may well actually put a bit of a sort of a swoop on the underneath to make it a bit more like a ski almost. You've got, you could use anything really, any hardwood. I mean, I wouldn't probably use poplar that this is made out of. The hamster's going to get fairly well bashed up down there. So I would always go for something a bit more robust. That looks like a bit of maple, walnut. Beach is fine. I mean, beach is dirt cheap still, so that's always worth going with. Even down to something like Sapili, any of the hardwoods, you can pretty much go to any timber merchants and you'll be able to find a little block of something that's robust enough, but I certainly wouldn't use things like pine, any of that sort of softwoods. Any hardwood you can get your hands on really will do the trick. So for the post itself, I'm going to use a half inch outer diameter aluminium tube now this is 10 gauge so it's got just over a three mil thick wall which is absolutely perfect for this because it fits snugly into the counter bores of most factory stocks for the standard fixing bolts and it also is a really nice close fit for an m6 bolt to go through there which also happens to be the vast majority of sporting rifles have m6 fixing bolts so in fact most of them use m6s um, the Anschutzes, they use M5s, but in any case, I try and use as beefier fixings as I can do. If you haven't got access to a lathe or anything like that, then actually using aluminium like this is going to be your best bet as opposed to trying to use Delrin or Acetel or something like that. This can be cut with a hacksaw. You can clean the ends up with that just in the chuck of a battery hand drill. So you don't really need anything fancy to work this stuff. And again, it's readily available in lengths 
local hardware shop, eBay, Amazon, wherever. So that's what we're going to use for this today. The first thing we want to do really is work out the rough shape that we want. Now, if it's your own stock and it's in good nick, probably be a wise idea to tape this up with some masking tape, some of the blue painters tapes, always a good bet, but I won't do that today. So you'll be able to see what I'm going to do here. So first thing I will want to do in this one, I'm going to offer it up to my walnut. I'm just going to check to see if there's any, I see there's a bit of damage on there. So we'll work around that. We won't use that piece there. Although this is wider than what I need, we'll cut that off. Hopefully you can see what I've done here. So I've just taped the stock upside down here to a flat board. That just allows me to keep it stood upright. Of course, the cheek piece itself is slightly taller, so it wouldn't stand upright otherwise. So I've just got a bit of tape under the end here and a bit of tape under the back section here. Another board. Now, because I'm left-handed, I'm gonna to have to do this the other way around. I've put a reference mark here for the center line of my stock fixing bolt, which will be my rear post of the hamster kit itself. And then all I'm gonna do, the wrong way round, where you've got the gauge hole, just jump past that. That's given me a fairly good trace off of that. That's really about as involved as we need to make it. I'm probably actually going to put a swoop in under here. That's the sort of thing that we're gonna go for. I'm gonna cut on the outside of my line here because it's a little bit thinner than I would like here, but I'll do that now. Okay. Cut the swoop a little bit taller than I needed. I've left the bottom on here for the moment. So that is a pretty good match to the underside of the stock itself. I've put a little notch out the top there just to follow that trigger guard line. Now, don't cut the swoop in just yet leave that flat so then once we drill these holes we've got a nice flat working surface to work from okay so my piece of wood is 51 mil thick just going to mark the center this is the reference point for that rear post that's going to go through there so 25 and a half mil cross that's my fixing for the rear post Next thing we need to do, I'll unwrap this and we need to have a pier inside of the stock and work out where we can put and drill that front fix in. Right, inside the stock, just forward of the gauge hole, we've got quite a nice solid bit of wood here that we can use to drill through and then we can inset the fix in through on the inside. So what I'm going to do is measure the width of the stock. Well, it's 50 mil wide. I'm going to mark a rough center line on here. What you may find is if you measure the outside of the stock and you pop a center line actually drill through it may not necessarily end up coming through that well centered on the inlet that's not uncommon um, often the inlets themselves aren't perfectly centered in the outside shaping of the stock so that's something you'll have to live with but best if you can match it up on the center line so use your trigger slot the fixing bolt hole and the gauge hole itself as your center line and then we'll mark that up and then I'll show you how to set up the drill what we don't want to do is just drill a hole straight through and bosh it straight through the inside because it will tear out on the inside. So on the pillar drill, I'll set it so that the very tip of the drill only just breaks through the inside of the inlet. So it'll only give me a little tiny pinhole on the inside, which I can then go back through from the inside of the stock to clean that hole up and put a counter bore in there for our fixing. Okay, so I've got the fence set up on the drill. That's along the center line now. What I have done, look, if you notice, that's as far down as that drill bit will go. So that tip will now just break through. The inlet on this particular stock is 15 mil deep where we're gonna be drilling through on the inside. So of course there's no wood there. The tip of this is just going to break through. So I'll clamp it up in the drill now. So we're gonna put another counter bore into the stock at the fore end portion for the front post. So depending on how you want to do that, if you're going to be drilling a little shallow counter bore with say a force and a bit like this, this is the time to do it before you do your through hole. Now the counter bore at the front to accept the post only needs to be maybe three millimeters deep, something along those lines just to locate it and hold it in there snugly. I'm going to use an M8 counter bore, but if you were gonna do it with this, drill your little counterboard hole first with your 13 mil force and a bit. And then once you've done that, then do your through hole. And of course the through hole will be centered in the hole that's made by the little pin in the center of the force and a bit there. 
Okay, so the stock's now clamped up. I've got a little tie down support here. I'm gonna quickly drill that through, but you may not see a lot of that because I'm gonna be in the way. But having it clamped down like this is so easy because then it can't go anywhere. You can hold it and support it with one hand, get the vacuum in here, whatever you need to do. So if you wanna make a drill press table, I've got a video of that up as well. So have a look at that. Noisy. That poplar stinks as well drilling it. All right, so that's drilled. I've left it clamped in here. I've just swapped that over to an M8 counterbore. I'm just going in, I'm not gonna measure it, but I'm just gonna put in a shallow counterbore here. I'm gonna go in sort of three mil deep on there. So I'll do that now. I've just done the same with the old hamster now. So I've drilled that clean through. I've counterbored what will be the inside edge of the hamster. So now, got the hole drilled it hasn't gone all the way through you can just see in here or hopefully you can see that the drill didn't break right through so I can put a nice clean hole back through this way we won't get any sort of splintering or anything like that so that's the reason why I stopped the drill bit just short of busting through on the inside there but what I'm going to do now is work out the depth that I need to set this at I'll grab a few little posts have a little play around to work out the depth that I want to set it at You'll notice that I haven't put in the front fixing yet. I'll do that a little bit later once I've established the rough depth that I need. So I'll get my post into the stock itself. I'll work out how long I need to get it for the depth that I need. And once I've done that, I'll then work out the correct length that I need to do and also the position of that front fixing in the hamster because it's easier to put a bolt through there into the right position and then I can just mark it going down through the hole here and it'll give me a nice mark on the hamster for a perfect drilled hole. So sometimes when you're marking across angled pieces of wood, you may end up being slightly out. So doing it that way, bolting the two together, then going down through the inside of the stock with your pencil, that will give you the perfect position for your front fixing on there. So I'm gonna get some fixings knocked up and we'll go from there. So I've worked out the post length that I want for this particular setup. That one is just under three centimeters long. I'm simply just gonna hacksaw this off and then I will chuck it in the lathe just to clean the end up on there. But because of the diameter of this, most drill chucks, you can pop that in there. If you've only got a file and a drill, you can just spin it in the drill with the file on the end and you'll be able to clean those up. So you don't need a lot of fancy tools. The fixings I've got are super simple. These are just fully threaded M6 bolts with a little dome head on them. They're stainless steel. That's the post that I've just trimmed off of that half inch post. So the rear post goes up through the hamster, post on there, that locates up in here. So this one will actually be the rear post bolt of the hamster, but hopefully you can see in there, this is also now what's going to retain the action into the stock itself. So once we're all done and finalized, this bolt, I'll trim the end of this down. So I've got eight turns of thread protruding from that inside face of the stock there. I'm going to put a wing nut on there just for the second, just to hold it all together while I'm working out the rest of it. I think on this one as well, I probably won't drill it for a gauge hole, but on the air arms, of course, you've got the gauge that's visible through the underside of the stock itself. So if you're gonna be competing with it, using it yourself, then it'd be a good idea to put a hole through. You don't need to go too big a hole actually, sort of 20 mil is fine. Um, you don't want to take out too much strength out the middle of your hamster, but once I've drilled this through on the inside, so this is going to be the front post bolt hole. There's all manner of options that you can use inside the stock. Now you could inlet a little channel in here and you could put in a rail type nut. You could just put a shallow counter bore in there and use sort of a maybe like a nylock, normal locking nut in there, or you could also use these sort of insert nuts. Now this is what I'm gonna put inside this one. So this is a coarse thread on the outside of here. This will take a bite into the wood itself, and it will mean that the hamster is removable from the outside, so we haven't got to access a nut. But if you can only get some M6 nylocks or whatever you can get your hands on, it's no real problem because you'd have to take the action out anyway as the rear post bolt is supporting the action in any case. So these normally need a nine mil hole drilled. So that will sit in there nicely. The only thing you need to be super careful of is that any of the fixings that you put in at the front here is that they don't protrude above this lower edge of the inlet. Because the last thing you want to do is to tighten your action up and it get caught on the top of a bolt or anything like that. So 
before you do your final fit and everything else, just have a good look over it, make sure that once it's all together, there's nothing sitting proud of this lower edge in here. Right, so I've just fitted the insert nut inside of there. I just counterboard the hole first. You can see it's all nice and clean. There's no bird edges or anything like that in there. So that's gonna work out pretty well. What I am gonna do is take this back out now that I've established the threads in there. And when it goes to the final sort of build of it, I'll put a little bit of glue in there with that. Next thing, I'm gonna bolt that off of there. Assemble that without the pose in at the back. And then with a sharp pencil, I'm sure it sits fairly central. So there's my mark again for my front fixing. Just check the center line of that. 51 mil wide. 25 and a half mil centers. Mark a little crosshair on that. That's the position for the front hole. So I'm gonna go and drill that through. I won't break right through the bottom again. I'll stop just short so I can drill it back through for a nice clean hole. And I'll put a counter bore on the inside here, like this one, and the same on the outside there. So I'll do that now. Okay, front hole's drilled through. A counter bore on either side so that will take the front fix in i'm going to reassemble it again and then i can measure up for that front post okay so the gap between the hamster and the stock body is 12 millimeters and i've got two three mil deep counter bores on either side so that'll give me a total post length of approximately 18 mil so I shall cut myself another post at 18 mil and see how it goes. Right now it's starting to look like a full hamster kit. Bolts are back through, the front posts in. You can see now, of course the wing nuts there just to help with assembly. The insert nut there is of course captive in the stock itself. I'll need to trim the end of this bolt off and make sure as I said earlier that it sits below this lower edge of the inlet. So now we can do the fun part, we can start shaping it. I'm gonna rip off this lower edge here and then I'm going to attack it with, might have a little go with one of the old hand planes, get a nice bit of shaping in there, put a reasonable radius on the underneath of that. Let's do that now. Right, I've loosely assembled it, so I ended up taking a bit more off of the bottom. The lines look a bit more aggressive now. Got a nice big radius on the underside here. I've trimmed that bolt off in the front there, so that sits two or three mil below the lower face of the inlet there. And I've just trimmed this one down, so I've got eight turns of thread on that rear bolt now. And I've just popped my little wing nut back on to keep it together for the moment. So that's turned out nicely. I'm happy with that. It looks, more importantly, feels great. So I think we'll call that good for the moment. I'm going to do another couple of videos on sort of Anschutz type rail mounted hamsters, um, the sort of thing you'd find on styres. There's quite a lot of info to go over as well about the differences in UIT type rail and things like that. So there's there's a few more videos to come on the hamster kits and things like that. And then the next one will probably be getting some adjustable cheek hardware into the stock. Now that is not gonna be that easy on here. It's super thin down the back here, so we've got very limited options to get some cheek hardware in there, but I'm sure I'll work something out. So, so we'll call that good and I'll see you in the next one.